How sees every Amazon FBA seller needs to know? Let's talk about this. My name is Marty Simonian, CEO and founder of Esco, law firm dedicated to Amazon sellers. And let's get into it. So whether you've been selling on Amazon for 10 years or you're starting out, these are the main policies that you should be aware of and you should know them by heart. Violating any of these policies isn't going to be healthy for your account, meaning you're going to be facing a suspension or maybe worse. But before we start about start talking about the policies, let's talk about the main document that's really at the heart of all of this. That's Amazon's BSA. If you're not aware of what Amazon's uh, business solutions agreement is, I suggest you look it up. It's You could access it from your seller central. But this is a document that is sort of the crucial agreement between you and Amazon. If you don't think you've signed this, I promise you, if you're selling on Amazon, you have signed it, and or at least you've agreed to it, right? You've electronically agreed to it. Everyone does whenever you start to sell. So take a look at this. You don't have to read it from A to Z, but just take a look at it. Be careful and review everything as much as you can. And if you have questions, reach out to us. But let's get into it. So the BSA covers five crucial things, I think. Number one is dispute resolution. What happens when there's a dispute between you and Amazon, right? Hint, hint, you'll be looking at arbitration, okay? And then intellectual property. What happens with your intellectual property? What happens with their intellectual property? It'll cover that product listing requirements. Part of the policies that we'll go over today are going to be related to that. So we'll get into that. Amazon FBA, some of the policies we discussed today will also include that. And then suspensions and termination. Again, we'll talk about that towards the end. But these are the main components that make up Amazon's BSA. Okay. And we do have other videos um, that discuss the BSA. Um, more specifically, so make sure you check those out too. All right, so the key policies that we're going to go over today, um, um, account health rating, which is something Amazon came out with about, I want to say three, three to six months ago. Reimbursement, what happens if Amazon loses your inventory? What happens if Amazon destroys your inventory? We'll get into that. ASIN creation, right? What happens what, what should you do when you try to create a new listing? We'll also get into the details required for each product page that you create, drop shipping, which has been a hot topic, and then what products are restricted from FBA, okay? So let's dive in. So the account health rating is something I'm a huge fan of. I think it provides Amazon sellers a lot more information than we had when I used to sell or even a year ago, it gives you a bar, sort of a rating of how close you are to suspension and how healthy your seller account is. For those of you selling now, I promise you we didn't have this before. So take advantage of this, review this on a daily or weekly basis, but it's a rating between zero to a thousand and anything above 200, you're good. Okay. Take a look at that. It's in your, it's going to be in your seller central uh, portal. Next thing you guys should know about is the FBA inventory reimbursement policy. So if you guys have had Amazon destroy or lose your inventory, give us a call. This is some a case we handle all the time. And a lot of our clients that contact us, they're surprised that a billion or what, maybe a trillion dollar company like Amazon loses inventory, right? They're like, how can a mature company like this lose inventory happens all the time. And it happens a lot more frequently when we get into Q4 because they're a lot busier and they're also bringing in new staff that may not be well-trained or may not be the most competent. So take a look at this and just know that if Amazon does lose your inventory or destroys it while it's in their possession, they do owe you a reimbursement. Next, ASIN creation policy. So 
with Amazon, if you want to create a new listing, first you have to check and see that there isn't that listing available. One easy way for you to check is a UPC, right? Now, if you're creating your own product, if it's for a private label product, then obviously it shouldn't be there because it's going to be a brand new brand name that you created and hopefully trademarked. And now you have to create a new one. So always make sure that whatever ASIN you're creating, whatever product listing you're creating, that there isn't already a duplicate one. So make sure you guys are aware of that because that can lead to a policy violation. Product detail page. Amazon is always changing the way their product pages looks. And sometimes they're experimenting with new information or new styles. Take a look at the rules as far as what information you can provide, what information you can't. And one of the, some of the simple rules are uh, no false information and obviously do not infringe the IP of others, okay? Dropshipping policy. A lot of people say dropshipping is prohibited. Well, maybe. So dropshipping Amazon does allow if the send from address matches whatever address you have. So the legal entity and the address must be you. So what this means is if I'm sitting here in California, in LA, California, and I get the order and my warehouse is in Texas, for example, that may be considered drop shipping. Or let's say my supplier is in Texas, right? And I'm drop shipping from my supplier. As long as my supplier is putting the from address with my business name, and my address, that's allowed. There's nothing wrong with that. What they don't allow is if I get an order and then I go to walmart.com or target.com and put the information for the order over there for that seller on that other marketplace to ship to my Amazon customer. That's not prohibited. Sorry, that is prohibited, okay? So stay away from that. FBA product restrictions. So FBA, amazing service that Amazon offers, but not every product qualifies for FBA, such as anything hazmat, obviously anything expired. So make sure you guys are aware of that and aren't sending in products into FBA that may fit the product restrictions policy, okay? Or is ineligible for FBA. So be on the lookout for that. Any questions about what we discussed today, feel free to um, schedule a free consultation with us. Our information is there. And if you like the information you got over here, go ahead and like and subscribe. And before I let you guys go, let me just give you three tips um, to sort of abide by once you guys are suspended or if you guys are ever suspended. Number one, don't please don't create another seller account. Amazon has about 20 different data points that they look out to be to identify if your account may be related to another account. So do not create a second seller account if your account is suspended. Go ahead and fix it, remedy the situation, but don't try to create another account. Number two, don't give your admin access, your seller central admin user permission access to any vendor, any service provider, or just really anyone, right? I would go as far as saying, don't even provide a service provider um, that's gonna be working on your account for suspensions access as a secondary user. Amazon systems are known to be glitchy at times. What you don't wanna see is a service provider, such as a reinstatement service that has access to, let's say, a thousand different seller accounts. And at the middle of it is them because now they've got secondary user access to all these accounts. Amazon system hasn't happened, but may happen, may glitch out and connect all these, which may result in a suspension. So stay away from providing user access to service providers. If they need information, they could tell you what they need. You could provide it to them. Number three, I would say don't submit POAs for the sake of submitting POAs. Put some thought into it, and you're, if you're going to just half-ass it, then it's better if you don't do it at all. So those are three tips for what to do if you are ever suspended. If you got any value, go ahead and like and subscribe. 
and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.